Hi, I'm Cindy Walter. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. We have had many phone calls and numerous emails to our website asking us for another baby quilt, so we know you'll enjoy our main project today. We've also experienced those problems like little puckers or wavy edges. But don't worry, we have a quilt nurse here to help us today. We'll brush up on our ironing techniques and make a wonderful travel iron case. So stay tuned. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Genomi America. Genomi, because you simply love to sew. American Quilters Society, dedicated America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 quilting machines, precision quilting machines. A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Millican & Company. The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living, with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. We're making special quilts, and what's more special than a baby? Join me in welcoming Cynthia Scott, who's going to show us a very festive baby quilt. Welcome, Cynthia. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. Tell us about our quilt today. Well, we're making a fast, quick, and easy serger quilt for the new baby. And we're starting with a great, colorful kids print as our starting point. Right. If you've got that good fabric, then you can match around it. And how, what other fabrics do we need then? Well, we select eight fat quarters um, in coordinating colors um, and which is easy because we all have those fat absolutely. quarters. Absolutely <laughs> we yeah. all have more than than we care to admit. Yeah, that's right. But um, and it's a very simple quilt because we're making it on the serger. Wait a minute, we're going to piece it on the serger? We are. I we are going to piece it, it okay, on the serger. Great. Okay, we can make the whole quilt on the serger. Absolutely. Okay. Until we get to the to the actual quilting. This okay. is this is what we're going to going to use. Wonderful. So we start with Well, wait a minute. On the serger, I'm just not familiar with these mm -hmm. and I want to get one. This is what a four four threads, I don't understand. We're using a four thread overlock okay. to create the quilt. Um, and we're also uh, the only other thing we're doing is changing the stitch length to to two. Okay. So it's a little more sturdy. Um, it'll go through all that washing that baby quilts okay. have to go through. Now be honest, are mm -hmm. sergers hard to use? Fast. They sew about twice the speed right. of a regular sewing kinda, machine. They kind of, uh, right. okay. Right. Okay, so our blocks fit. Um, eight, um, nine patch blocks, okay. and then we have seven uh, solid blocks. Okay. And um, basically what we do is cut a five inch square out of each of our eight um, fat quarters. Okay. We're then sewing them on to a single strip of uh, two and three quarter inch wide um, white on white fabric. Okay. So I've already started this strip here but I'll finish. Um, what's unique about this is that I've actually pinned this strip um, outside of the cutting area. As you know Cindy, a serger actually has a cutting blade on it cuts the edge of the fabric, but we're just skimming the edge of it. Um, so you've put the pins perpendicular so that they're not in the way of any part of the serger. That's very smart. Correct. Okay. Um, pin from the left and to the side so they're not in the way of the blade or the needles. Now, people are a little confused on what this looks like opened up, but I, I just want to take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It looks just like a regular seam with right. a quarter inch seam allowance under right. there. Right. Super, and it's very sealed. It must be very washable when the seams are so sealed. Right. It's very durable. That's great. Great. So once we get our stratus sewn on, I see that do we sew another chain on to make a ladder? Right. So we're sewing another two and three quarter inch strip onto the opposite side. Um, that gives us our little colorful ladder. Okay. Then we go ahead and cut the um, strips apart, and that'll give us our center portion of our nine patch. Okay. And so we cut these at five inches, just like that center block. Exactly. Okay. Just just cut to the five inch block. Okay. So then our outside strips. 
-hmm. we can just show this here. You have it pinned almost the same way. Exact, uh, same concept, okay. but with our two and three quarter inch squares sewn to a five inch strip. Okay. Just the we opposite. sew it on just the opposite. Um, again, we have our, our little ladder here, and we will cut those apart to create in our two, two and three quarter inch strips to create the outer side, and that creates our whole entire block. Correct. And there we have our great block. Now, right. once our blocks are together, mm -hmm. we surge them together too. Exactly. Okay, following exactly. the pattern alternating. Same idea. Right. right. And I noticed you had a great border treatment, and so to make the border treatment, you told me a secret that you sewed strata on the serger. Exactly. Very fast uh, cutting mat and um, clear temp. Uh, ruler, we can cut our two and three quarter inch colorful border to go on our quilt. One of the things I admire about sewing with you, I've learned so much, but one of the great things is you are so good at detail. And I saw this little inner uh, tuck that you put between the quilt and the border. Right. Now tell me how you did that. Well, this was to incorporate the um, back fabric that started the whole quilt oh, into the front. Great. So I just took a uh, folded uh, strip of the fabric and inserted it when I sewed the final border on. Um, in between the two borders and then stitched it down with a decorative stitch. Yes, so that brings the, the fabric to the front of the quilt. That decorative stitch really adds a wonderful touch. A wonderful Two top stitching like that, a little embroidery, what type of thread? Is it a rayon or is it a cotton? This particular thread is a polyester embroidery thread. Okay. Um, very colorful and, and it works well with the quilt. Yeah, it's gorgeous. That looks really, really pretty. Well, an important thing, all of us have problems, you know, how do we quilt that quilt? And you have an ingenious yes. way here. You tell us about that. Well, um, when, you, when you're stumped in how to quilt a quilt, um, sometimes you can look to your fabric yeah. to give you a clue. So what I did was I took the fabric down to my local copy store, uh, copy place, and did a 600% in quilting pattern. And that was so smart because it gave you the perfect quilting sizes, and here we have it traced. Right. Trace it all over your whole entire piece for your pattern. Right. And then I saw you had a little bit more lines. Let's see. Using, the, um, using this as a pattern for Trapunto. Oh, you know how I like triple. So, um, what we've done is taken the marked top, okay. layered it again with our, our um, stitched around our planets and our stars. When we're completed with that step, we turn it over, use our applique scissors, and we can trim away oh. the excess fat bat, oh. and then we have our trapunto. Great. Um, at that point, then we layer it with our flat batting. So we would layer this all up. Right, once okay. it had been trimmed, and we would create, we would have this. Barkley, um, kind of an iridescent metallic thread just to outline the trapunto areas. And to get our shooting star lines, um, you can use a flexible rule and just, you, again, using your water soluble um, pen, mark your lines and create your fun movement with your quilt in the background with the, the lines. You know, we took such a basic pattern, a nine patch, mm -hmm. but with all these details, you've really created, a, you know, you've turned it into an incredible quilt with all these wonderful details like double needles and your own design of quilting lines. That's it's ingenious. Fun. It's fun. And I think it's great too. I see that you have matching pillows and curtains and everything to match that bed quilt. And I loved on this pillow how it's a star that's trapunto and around it you stippled a tight little stipple to have the uh, trapunto pop out. So that was yes. great. We incorporated a little bit of our um, embroidery software, did the lettering and really made a personalized pillow and a quilt label for it's the quilt. It's wonderful. I always learn so much from you. Thanks for being our guest again, Cynthia. Thank you for having me, Cindy. We're very honored today to have a very special expert long arm teacher. It's Jody Beamish from Canada. Hi, Hi. Jody. Hi, Janie. I'm very thrilled to be here today. Jody is going to tell us some tricks when we have a quilt that isn't perfect. Exactly. Um, there are a lot of long arm quilters who are doing work for hire and one of the things that you're going to encounter if you're doing that is problem quilts. 
And so what I wanted to show today is a couple of the common things that you might have to deal with if you're a long arm quilter. Yes, they all want to know what to do. Exactly. So what we've got here, our first quilt, um, this is probably the thing that you're going to see the most often. And it is a quilt that has wavy borders. And if you have a look here, you can see what I'm talking about. We've got a little bit of action happening on the edges yes, here. Yes, a little bit too much. Exactly. They're winged out a little. They are. And what happens is when you quilt this, you want to try and deal with that so that you end up with a nice square flat quilt. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I do with them and um, I'll do a little bit of quilting on this one and we'll see how it looks when I'm done. Okay. First thing that you want to do is you have to find out what the quilt should be when you're finished. Um, it, because it's got spread out borders, the outside edge is actually wider than the inside the of the quilt. So we want to work. That's a good test. Yes, it's an easy way to figure out if you've got a problem with yes. it. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the quilt off the center. And as we can see, this one is 25 inches. So we want to find the center of that. And we want to measure in 25, half of 25 inches on the center of where we're going to pin the quilt on. So we're going to do a center here at 12 and a half. We're going to do the outside edge, right back there at the edge of the tape, and then on this side, back to 25. 25, exactly. So there's where our quilt should be fitting. And so we're going to put this one in, do a real quick pin, and then when you go to put your, the rest of your quilt on, you have to line it up to where you had it before. Okay, we'll just put a couple of pins in here because we want to do this quickly. But what you want to do when you're doing this on your long arm machine is you want to take all this fullness and ease it into that, that space now. So you've got to take your next pin, divide the center. Divide the wrinkle. Divide the wrinkle. Little. Divide the wrinkle here, here, here. Bring this in and you're going to put the whole thing on, easing all that fullness back into the right shape of the quilt. Okay. Okay. And we're going to just pretend that I've pinned that all on today. So then the other thing that you need to deal with, of course, is that fullness isn't just in one direction. It's going in this direction as well. Yes. So as you put your quilt on, the center is going to be nice and flat, but you're going to have the wrinkles coming as you go down the quilt. So you put a, a pin in on whatever space you're working on, and then do the same thing. Divide it. Divide, divide it, it. Divide it. That's right. And so now if I were quilting this in my studio, I would take um, my machine and nicely base down, easing in that fullness with the pin still there, so that we're not pushing that fullness down to the bottom of the quilt. It wouldn't be good to use a straight line design on there because you'd just be pushing that wave right along. That's it exactly. We're going we're gonna to talk about that just now when we go and, and do a little bit of quilting in the borders. Okay. Something that I like to do with um, quilts like this is I do like to stabilize the inside of the border um, and that helps to keep the rest of it from moving and to keep the rest of the inside of the quilt from moving. So we'll go in, pick up our thread here, a couple stitches to keep it going and put the needle down. And I've got a little ruler just to make the job quick and easy. Okay, so you would stabilize all the way along the edge to get that nice and smooth. Now you can see even if you move it with your hands, now that's yeah, not moving Yeah, it's not going to go much. too many places. Yeah, we need to turn that down just a little bit. So we'll go back in and just do a little bit of this border and work around the corners so you can see some of the designs that I would use. Okay. Um, on this quilt, as you said, you don't want to use anything straight because it'll push all of that fullness around. And you also don't um, want to do anything that crosses over on itself because if it pushes one way and pushes the other way, you end up with a big wrinkle. So keep to designs that are nice and open. Like a large meandering? A large meandering is just a great thing. It works everywhere you could imagine. It just goes so many different angles and has a little wrinkle to it. That's right. We're hitting the there. Hmm. That seems to work really well. Yeah. Okay, and, and if you put a little extra bulk in there, it's just kind of part of it. Does it help to use a little deeper batting sometimes? It sometimes is helpful to use a bit of batting because it can absorb a little bit of that fullness. More hill and valley to it. That's right. Yeah. Okay, and another quick thing that you can do that's really nice on these borders is just to go in and do a big swirl. A big swirl. Okay, and it 
also. We have a couple more quilts here too. Mm -hmm. This one had the problem actually opposite in it's, the middle. That's right. So what we would do with this is treat it exactly the way we did with this one. Um, you, again, Only you're stretching instead of and stretching push. instead of shrinking everything in. So as you can see on this edge where it's bubbling here, we're just pulling it a little bit, easing it in. You mm -hmm. don't want to pull too much because you don't want to distort it, but you want to just kind of ease it in. Okay, and this one? This one is, it looks nice and flat. It doesn't seem like it's really a problem quilt, but it is on the diagonal. Stretchy, Very like a piece stretchy. of elastic so you can't you pull can't on it too pull much. On it. That's right. Be you want to tender with that. You want to make sure that you keep as little tension on it as possible, and again, make sure that you baste on the sides so you don't have a problem as you get down to the Pin bottom. Pin baste or machine baste. That's right. You know, this is really wonderful because I know myself that borders are always a problem, and I hope you have helped some of us get this problem under control. So I Good. thank you so much for your little remedies for these problem quilts. Wonderful. I hope they were a help. We have a very special guest here today whose quilts have touched the lives of many children. Join me in welcoming Judith Meeker. Hi, Judith. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You know, your quilts, this is such a great idea. You actually make quilts for children in need. How did you get started? Well, uh, we were, I was teaching fourth grade and um, heard that three to 4,000 people freeze in Afghanistan every year. So I asked my students if they'd like to make a quilt. And um, we established a criteria of nonviolent, non-political, and non-religious pictures, sweet pictures from their hearts. Wow. So we draw them with fabric markers. And we started sending them within six weeks they were in Afghanistan. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. And how many countries now are, are your quilts we've in? We've gone to up to nine countries just recently. Um, and we've had thousands of children making these, making okay. squares. They draw pictures and we have them on paper. We proofread them and write little letters and we send the books with them. And we just keep sending them. Yeah. I noticed in the quilts that you were making for the children in Africa that you actually use an ethnic um, African fabric in there. That will probably help the kids feel more comfortable and warm about that. How many quilts do you think you've already made? We've made hundreds of quilts from thousands of, of students. Amazing. Yeah. Now, um, I know this is something that a lot of my friends are going to want to help with. Um, I'm sure you need donations of fabric or time. How can I reach you or see you know, how I can help your organization? We have a website, morethanwarmth.org. Morethanwarmth.org. Okay. Yes, yes. And we can uh, go can to that and find out. Mm -hmm. And an interesting factor, too, I saw that these blocks are also artistic and unique. And you told me earlier that the kids make these. Still, yes, to this yes. day, kids are making all the blocks. Yes, yes. Different schools volunteer and make the blocks. So we're, it is wonderful. We take this to the classroom and I do a presentation or other teachers do. Teachers have contacted me from around the country, even Korea, and we just um, uh, talk to the children and they make these, you know, following that criteria. And we have volunteers sewing quilts and we just continue making quilts for children. Um, there's maps to download on the website. You can see where the quilts have gone, uh, you know, around the world. Uh, kids can you know, download a map, follow where the quilts have gone, ask me, you know, where their particular quilts have gone, so. Where, what is your most touching um, experience? I mean, because I'm just touched seeing all your quilts, and you must have, have, this is very rewarding. And what's your most touching time that you can think of? Oh, we've had, there's been many. There's been many having the quilts arrive there in friendship centers where hundreds of kids have walked through and oh. seen the quilts, read the letters, oh. and uh, hearing stories back from Baghdad even last month about the quilts arriving to children, to orphans, and sending them to Af Africa where hundreds of kids have virtually nothing and are wow. sick with AIDS and wow. being able to send quilts to them. Wow, well, this is wonderful, and I can't wait to check out your website. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. One of our favorite designers, Marinda Stewart, is here to give us some ironing tips. Welcome, Marinda. Hi, Cindy. We're going to talk irons today. Oh, good. You and I both know that a good iron is an essential tool in our repertoire, and frequently it can correct problems that we might not like to admit we have. And I agree, because <laughs> I travel a lot teaching, mm -hmm. and there's nothing worse than using a terrible iron in a hotel room to try to I block got, out a quilt. Or... I've got the solution for you, my okay. new favorite toy. A travel iron? A travel oh, iron that has everything that a, that a grown-up big city iron has, but it's portable. Okay, good, that's what it I need. It comes in this cute little traveling case, mm -hmm. which I think looks like a mouse. <laughs> And it comes out, and the handle pops up when you pull it oh, out. Oh, my word, and it's, 
So the handle's in, mm -hmm. and it just pops up, and it's Absolutely. lightweight. Good. And it's lightweight, and it's fabulous. It gives you full steam, and it gives you um, vertical steam as well. You had We've one got plugged one in, so yep, you can heat show it up. Me. So look. Oh wow. So you can actually steam your clothes in the hotel room if you need to. That's great. But what I use this for, and what it's a real treasure for, is to take to your classes. I bet, I bet. Because it gives you all the things that you need in a class without the bulk and without... Will it um, iron out those wrinkles? It'll iron out anything. Oh, it works beautifully. Yeah, that's great. That's nice and cat fabric. This cat fabric is amusing because this is my actual cat. What? The, my friend that designed this fabric, I send him photo. I keep him supplied with photographs of my cats. He thought this one was charming. He had it painted and he put it in fabric. So that is my cat. Niles. Oh my gosh, that is so great! Well, <laughs> and that, he looks just like that. I hope you make was... a lot of things with that fabric. That's kind of <laughs> neat. We had the uh, iron sitting on this trivet. Yes, this is a trivet, and this is another wonderful thing. That's a wonderful asset. New to the batting family is this insulated batting, and this is marvelous. You can just see it here. It's got a little bit of metallic shining through it. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's some sort of metallic heat insulating mm -hmm. stuff in the middle of the batting. So you could use that for like an iced tea cup holder or okay. a barbecue mitt or Absolutely. anything cold or hot. to make hot pads and things for your kitchen. If anything that you needed to keep insulated, I want to see if I batting. can cut this. Cuts just like totally anything. Totally can cut it. Good. Totally like anything. It is wonderful. Well, that's and it's lightweight, be, and it's a fabulous product. That's going to be a handy product. Uh, when you told me you were going to show irons, I automatically thought of my snippet quilts because sometimes you know I fold my quilts up mm -hmm. in my suitcases to take traveling, and I wanted to see if this little thing would could straighten this out. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it totally yeah. does. It irons out the creases. And then another thing I thought of right away is that. Most of the irons don't get hot enough to set some mm -hmm. of the webs. And the web I like to use, that double stick, it takes a full 15 seconds of a lot of steam and a really hot iron. So I'm, I'm envisioning that, that I'm going to be able to use this quite a bit. That's going to work beautifully in your travel, okay. uh, in, when you're in a traveling situation. Right. When we're at your home, we have another one, and that is the big puppy. This okay. is the equivalent of, of, a, uh, of a man's you know, power saw chainsaw kind of thing for women. It's an iron, and look at the kind of steam you get out of it. Oh, my word. Blast of steam. Wow. So you can get vertical steam as well as horizontal steam. Okay. And it sits on this wonderful console. The water goes in. You can fill it without ever removing the water. There's no now, danger to the steam. Some of those steamed. steam irons you, you can't fill when they're um, hot. So can you fill this while it's... Absolutely. Just put the, put the water oh, in Oh, that's the a nifty... You can fill it with a, with a, um, a pitcher, regular tap water. Wow, that's a nifty No special nifty feature. kind of water. Or if you need to, you can remove the whole tank when the iron is cool okay. and fill the tank separately. Pretty handy when blocking out a quilt to have such a powerful big Absolutely. iron, too. Under the best of circumstances, sometimes we get little bobbles. This partly came because there's so much dense quilting in this, mm -hmm. and this needs blocking. So what you can either do it from the top or on top of a terry cloth towel, which is, since that's beaded, it's really better mm -hmm. to do this from the back. And you can just steam okay. the whole thing. And then, if you want to iron it dry, I can imagine it's that, that that would be a beautiful that blocked out job. Good. And look at how smooth Not that, that is. Not that any of my quilts ever have that way. Oh, no, yours never do. How about. <laughs> yeah, yours how, are always perfect. That's because I block them. How about garments <laughs> and steaming a garment? Steaming a garment is just as easy. Um, we're sort of doing this under less than optimum situations. First of all, Never ever steam a garment on a person. Oh, of course. <laughs> the steam is very that hot. That seems That's like an obvious thing to say, but you'd be surprised at how many people think, oh, in just a minute, I'll just steam it. Mm -hmm. With the vertical steamer, you need to create a little bit of tension. Wow. Oh, that took the wrinkles right out. Well, thank and you, Miranda, it. because your, your tips are always so wonderful, and this is much easier than trying and to good iron a garment. Make a job easier. It sure does. Thanks for coming here today. Thank you. Quilters are so good hearted, and I'm impressed that even with our busy schedules, they find time to give back to society. Everyone loves receiving a quilt, so I hope you too will find time to be involved with one of your local charities. Thank you for joining us today. Handmade purses are hot, so next time on Quilt Central, we'll learn how to make several styles. And for those of us who are intrigued by the long arm quilting machine, but perhaps a little bit afraid to learn, our experts are going to start us at the very beginning. I don't want to miss that, and I'm sure you won't either. So see you next time on Quilt Central. Quilt Around the Clock. 
visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. More than one. We need to let you know we care. More than one. That we are working for peace here. More than one. Sending blankets, not bombs. More than one. May our love keep you more than warm. We put our hearts in our hands. We speak of love and not war. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines, A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company, Krause Publications, Millican & Company, The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Now you can celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8224.